गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल आई एम डॉक्टर दिव्यकांत परमार वर्किंग एज एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर इन कार्डेक एन एस एस सी आर एट यू एन एम आई सी आर सी आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन ऑल द ट्रांसकेस्टिक व्यूज एंड द अपर इसोफिजियल व्यूज दैट इज द पार्ट ऑफ द प्रीवियस कंपनी एंड सी यू टी एग्जामिनेशन कमिंग टू द ट्रांसकेस्टिक व्यू द फर्स्ट वन इज द मेजल शॉर्ट एक्सिस व्यू at zero degree uh, this view is obtained as the probe is advanced into the stomach so we cannot uh, visualize any heart that means the probe enters into the stomach so this uh, uh, view of the uh, mitral valve from the stomach that is parallel to the annulus with the posterior leaflet on the display right and the anterior leaflet to the left we can see the uh, this structures this is the anterior uh, mitral valve leaflet this is the posterior mitral valve leaflet then the left ventricle seen as a circular and right ventricle as a cisgenetic shape and uh, we are watching the left ventricle uh, from uh, below so uh, this is the inferior wall and this is the anterior wall so we can see the all six basal segments this is the antero lateral this is the antero septal this is the infro lateral this is the infro septal and this is the inferior wall so we can assess uh, this uh, mitral valve area by using planimetry and whether any mitral resurgent uh, jet present from which scallops we can also uh, assess we can also uh, see the any vsd or pericardial effusion and uh, this is uh, mitral valve opening is similar to the fish mouth so this gives a fish mouth appearance trans coming to the transgastric mid short axis view so transgastric mid papillary view is the starting point for all the transgastric view which is made at the 0 degree uh, after advancing into the stomach so we have to anti flex the probe and uh, some left flexion may be required to center the lv cavity and we have to increase the transducer angle up to 20 degree to obtain the symmetrical circular lv with both papillary muscles present so we can see this anterolateral papillary muscle posteromedial papillary muscles and all the uh, six uh, this uh, uh, mid level segments that is the anterior anterolateral uh, anteroseptal and infraseptal infraleteral and the inferior so this view is uh, also uh, most important we can uh, measure the left ventricular cavity and we can also measure the uh, left ventricular wall thickness interventricular septal thickness we can also assess the left ventricular function uh, then the for volume status this view is also most important uh, we can also assess the right rv function also so whenever this interventricular septum is uh, straight then it will suggest the pulmonary artery hypertension and uh, any pericardial effusion is present we can also see here coming to the transgastric rv basal view so we can get this view by uh, turning the probe right side that is the clockwise from the transgastric basal short axis view and uh, this is the transgastric rv basal view so we can see the tricuspid valve in a short axis here and pulmonary valve uh this is the pulmonary artery and this is the pulmonary valve rbot you can see here and uh, here uh, this is the posterior here comes the posterior leaflet this is the septum side so we can see the septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve and here comes the anterior leaflet of the tricuspid valve so 12 o'clock 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock we can see the tricuspid valve in a cross section so we can also assess any tricuspid valve pathology or pulmonary valve pathology and we can also measure the gradient across the rvot or pulmonary valve in this view 
ट्रांसकेस्टिक राइट वेंट्रिकल इनफ्लो आउटफ्लो व्यू दिस इज व्यू इज ऑप्टेन फ्रॉम द ट्रांसकेस्टिक आर वी बेजर व्यू बाय राइट फ्लैक्सिंग द प्रोपटिव दिस इज अ चैलेंजिंग व्यू टू ऑप्टेन इन अ नॉर्मल हार्ट एंड सिमिलर इंफॉर्मेशन कैन बी ऑप्टेन फ्रॉम द अदर ट्रांसकेस्टिक व्यू तो अदर इमेजिंग मैथड इज दैट फ्रॉम दिस ट्रांसकेस्टिक मिड शॉर्ट एक्सिस व्यू we have to uh, rotate the probe right side and center the rv then we have to increase the transducer angle up to 90 to 100 or 110 degree then we can also uh, see this view the structures visualized are the right atrium right ventricle and the rvot pulmonary valve so this is the anterior structure so this is the anterior leaflet and this is the posterior leaflet of the tricuspid valve and uh, this is the left and right cusp of the pulmonary valve so by putting color doppler we can also detect any pathology of the tricuspid valve or the pulmonary valve coming to the transcastic true chamber view this view is uh, Uh, obtained from the transcastic mid short axis view by increasing the transducer angle to 90 to 110 degree and this uh, image is the left ventricle in long axis and the subvalvular structures of the mitral valve so we can see the subvalvular apparatus of the uh, mitral valve and uh, this is the left atrial appendage this is the anterior wall of the lv and uh, and this is the posteromedial papillary muscles we can see we can also see the corda tendineae uh, clearly in this view uh, as uh, other views we can also uh, assess the left ventricular systolic function and the mitral valve pathology in this view this is a transcastric long axis view so from this uh, uh, transgastric uh, mid short axis view we have to center the lv then we have to increase the transducer angle up to 120 to 140 then we can see this uh, aorta opening at the 4 o'clock position so this view is uh, also important to assess the subvalvular apparatus cordy tendineae and the uh, uh, papillary muscles uh, by putting color doppler we can also assess the gradient across the lvot or the aortic wall and uh, we can also assess uh, post operatively for the prostatic uh, and aortic wall any perivalvular leak present or not coming to the transcastic rv in flow view uh, from the transcastic mid short axis view we have to turn the probe right side at 0 degree and further rotating forwards to 100 to 120 degrees so we can see this structures right atrium right ventricle and the sub uh, valvular uh, apparatus of the tricuspid valve we can see the papillary muscles and the corda tendineae of the tricuspid valve so important for the tricuspid valve uh, pathology and uh, uh, other rms or the rv systolic function we can also assess from this this transcastic ivc long axis view from the transcastic mid short axis view we have to turn the probe right side to find the liver then we have to uh, withdraw the probe to find the ivc as it enters the ra and uh, this uh, view we can uh, from this view we can see this uh, ivc and uh, as we increase the angle up to 30 to 35 we can see also hepatic vein so uh, as ivc opens into the uh, right atrium so this view is useful to detect uh, any tricuspid regurgitation present or no uh, by uh, showing this hepatic vein flow reversal we can also detect any ivc mass tumor or thrombus and we can confirm the ivc cannula position 
and we can also uh, diagnose any hypolemia by assessing this respiratory variation of the IVC uh, and uh, so this view is useful also for the ICU patients also to detect hypovolemia or hypervolemia or the RV dysfunction or tricuspid regurgitation present or not. Transgastric apical short axis view. Uh, from the transgastric mid short axis view, we have to advance the probe and then we have to do anti flex uh, of the probe. So, this will show the LV apex and the cavity becomes small in this view and uh, we cannot see the papillary muscles. We will uh, assess the regional wall motion of the this uh, five apical segments that is the uh, inferior, anterior and uh, this is the lateral and this is the septal and fifth is the apical. What is the anterior and fifth is the uh, apical. So, we can also detect any apical aneurysm present or not or any uh, um, apical VSD present or not. Uh, we can also see any pericardial effusion or this uh, motion of the interventricular septum can be assessed in this view. Deep transgastric long axis view. This view we can get by advancing the probe further in the stomach beyond the transgastric uh, apical short axis view and then we have to anti-flex the probe and the left side uh, rotation may be required. Then we can get this image. Uh, this is the five chamber view in which we visualize this structures left atrium, left ventricle, right atrium, right ventricle and the aorta. So, this view is useful for uh, measuring the gradient across the aortic wall or the LVOT and we can also assess the prostatic aortic wall function. Uh, we can also detect any VSD present or not. Then metal wall uh, pathology specifically subvalvular apparatus or any systolic anterior motion of the anterior metal wall if present. We can also detect all these things into this view. Then descending aortic short axis view. Now for visualizing the descending aorta, we have to turn the probe left from the mid esophageal four chamber at zero degree till the circular image of the descending aorta is seen close to transducer. So for this uh, view, we have to reduce the uh, gain and uh, reduce the depth setting around six to eight. Uh, centimeters to optimize the structure because it is so close to the transducer. And uh, we can also uh, assess the entire descending aorta by, ad by advancing or withdrawing the probe by keeping the aorta in the center. So, uh, we can also detect the any uh, atherosclerosis in the wall of the aorta, any dissection flap present or not then aneurysm of the aorta can be diagnosed and uh, we can also uh, uh, detect any left rotor effusion. Uh, it is present between the aorta and uh, the lungs. Here comes the lungs. So, we can also see left rotor effusion is present and if uh, any turbulent flow present, uh, then uh, it will suggest this uh, aortic stenosis or flow reversal present, then it will suggest the uh, uh, AR. We can confirm the IVP position uh, in this view. Descending aortic long axis view. So, to obtain this view, we have to increase the transducer angle up to 90 degree from the descending thoracic aortic short axis view. So, this will show the this proximal aorta on the right side of the display while distal aorta on the left side of the display. So, this view is also useful uh, as, same as uh, uh, talked previously. So, this original of the left subterranean artery is seen on the right side of the 
this uh, image. Here we can see this uh, uh, left subclavian artery. Upper esophageal aortic cars long axis view. So from the descending aortic short axis view, we have to withdraw the probe and uh, do the slight right side turn. Then we can see the uh, this oblong shape of the transverse uh, aortic cars long axis view. So as we withdraw the probe, we can see this oblong shape. So this is the aortic arch. Here the proximal aortic arch and this is the distal aortic arch. So this view is uh, useful for the atherosclerosis, any dissection or aneurysm of the aorta or the arch of aorta. And if uh, uh, flow reversal present, then it will suggest the aortic regurgitation. In case of bright aortic arch, we can see this oblong shape here at the uh, right side of the display. Upper esophageal aortic arch short axis view. From the upper esophageal aortic arch long axis view, we have to increase the transducer angle up to 70 to 90 degrees, and this film shows the innominate vein and the left subclavian artery origin also. So, this is the aortic arch in a short axis, and this is the pulmonary artery as a longitudinal structure. Uh, so, we can also assess the gradient across the pulmonary evolve in this view and uh, we can also confirm the position of the IABP in this position. If we uh, slide withdraw and rotate the probe from uh, right, right to left side, then we can also see this uh, common carotid and the brachiocephalic artery. Uh, we can also see whether any PDA present or not. So finally, to conclude my topic, this comprehensive analysis of all the recommended views should be completed whenever feasible as it helps in understanding the anatomy better. It diagnoses unexpected findings which facilitates us to alter the surgical plan accordingly minimizes the time and manipulation for complete examination. Thank you.